Shabbat Shalom. My name is Rabbi Jesse Mordechai Chair and the Rabbi of Beit Shira Congregation in beautiful Pinecrest, Florida. And I'm so honored to share the Devar, the sermon this week for the Greater Miami Jewish Federation. And it is Parshat Ekev. So first and foremost, I want to wish everyone a good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom. In this week's Parsha, we read in Devarim chapter 7, verse 12, V'haya ekev tishmeun et hamishpatim ha'ele, u'shmartem va'asitem otam, v'shamar Adonai Elohecha lecha et habrit v'et ha'chesed asher nishpa la'avotecha. And if you obey these rules and observe them carefully, your God, Adonai, will maintain faithfully for the covenant made an oath with your ancestors. The name of this Parsha is Akev. So when we think about Akev, what does Akev mean? According to Orachayim, Chaim ben Moshe ibn Atar, a Talmudist and Kabbalist born in Morocco in the late 17th century, the word Akev also is a hint that a Torah-observant individual is humble. The word akev, from the body part, heal, reminds the individual for the need for humility. Rashi, Rabbi Shlomo ben Yitzchaki, also explains and that the text signifies a heel. Why? Because sometimes a person treads, walks on a lighter mitzvah in order to perform a greater mitzvah. But we're saying the mitzvot are all important. When I was learning in yeshiva, I had a friend named David. David would carry around a composition notebook. He would put it in his pocket and he would write down all the mitzvot. You heard it correctly, all the mitzvot. David informed me that this task had been completed before by Rambam, by Maimonides in the Mishnah Torah, and that many individuals obligate themselves to follow his example. Just also as we are instructed that everyone should write their own Sefer Torah, their own Torah. We know the halacha, the Jewish law, but we support the sofers, the scribes, to fulfill this obligation on our behalf. So David assured me that he would write all the commandments and their sources, and if I had any questions, we could also refer to his notebook. One morning, a question did come up. Thank God we were blessed to have his notebook. As it happened, a bar mitzvah was scheduled to take place at our yeshiva. This was not the most common occurrence, but the Rosh Yeshiva felt blessed to provide a yeshiva for young people in the community that otherwise would not have a space to mark the rite of passage. The rabbi would invite the family on Thursday mornings for shacharit, the bar mitzvah would put on talis and tefillin, and have an aliyah. It was a short weekday, weekday service, but incredibly moving and impactful for everyone, for all those in attendance. The Gabbai called the boy for an aliyah, and the boy began reciting the blessings before reading the Torah. Baruch et Hashem HaMivorach, and continued with the rest of the blessing. The bar mitzvah did not pronounce Adonai. Rather, he referred to God by Hashem. I heard a noise behind me and turned to find David looking through his notebook as quietly and as respectfully as possible. After the service, I approached David and I asked him about what he was looking for. He shared that one of the commandments he recorded is to only swear in the affirmative when using the name of God, specifically when using the name Adonai to fulfill this mitzvah. The source, he said, for this mitzvah is in Devarim chapter 10, verse 20. You must revere Adonai. Only your God shall you worship. To God shall you hold fast, and by God's name shall you swear. What David was checking in his notebook was whether the name for God uttered by the bar mitzvah and the bracha was valid. Now, you may be hearing this and think, what significance can this innocent error truly hold? Why question using the name of Hashem or any of the dozens of names we have to refer to God in place of Adonai? I too, I must admit that with all of the other questions that compete for our consideration, this seems like one we should just let slide. This is a challenge in our faith tradition. 
Returning to the Parsha, chapter 8, verse 11, our Torah instructs us, take care lest you forget your God Adonai and fail to keep the divine commandments, rules, and laws which I enjoin upon you today. These laws are important, but we also must keep the spirit of the law. We must never forget the unconditional love that Moses shows us as God becomes angry with us. Here, chapter 9, verse 14, let me alone and I will destroy them and blot their name from under heaven and I will make you a nation far numerous than they. But what does Moses do? Moses doesn't get tempted by this prospect. Moses cares for us. He loves us. Sure, we can be stubborn and difficult. Sometimes we bicker and don't treat one another with the kindness we should. But we're family. Though we stray, Moses reminds us in this Parsha that the promises that God made to our ancestors have one condition, that we must fulfill the mitzvot. This Shabbat is also Shabbat Mevachim HaChodesh, anointing, getting ready for the new month of Elul. We make a promise, a commitment to not only focus on mitzvot, but the spirit of the mitzvot as well. I want to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom. Be well. Blessings.